Alright, so... Uh, well, this could be an interesting one. Yeah, well, it's going to be when I go through this, uh, I'll have the list, so I'm going to go through it. We've got to talk about why we're doing this. Uh, and uh, we'll go just make it a quick 20 minute thing, no big deal. Okay. Alright, so let's start this thing. And I know you can't, so it's because I know you know. Two? Yeah. One. Hey, welcome to The Goose. It is another Saturday special with, if we have that beep, 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 beep breaking news thing. Well, if you notice, there's a different logo coming down today. Thank God. So no, thank God. Just put a logo. I thought we were talking Boston. So. No, no, no. no. The um, logo, the logo dropping at the beginning of the show is the new FIHL logo, and that's what we're talking about today. Yeah. Right. So the question is that everybody's asking is, why is this FIHL? And so that's what the show is about. We're going to explain what it is. Well, there you go. So let's talk about it. Okay. So how did this come about? This has been in my head for a long time. I actually did a very similar thing to uh, the Adult League in Ellington when the Ellington Ring first opened. That was called the New Frontier Hockey League. It was a 25-game schedule and had an All-Star Week and everything was taken care of up front. It was it's, fun, it's funny you should mention that because I played in that league. I don't remember yet. Yeah, I know. I played for the, uh, was it the Bears? Uh, I played with Hairball. Oh, jeez, Hairball. Jeff Layton. Jeff Layden, yeah. absolutely. He did a column on the website called Hairball's Grapevine. Yeah. Because we had a website and, and different captains would contribute different articles. Right, everyone knows. We had a lot going on for that league. It was a fun league. Well, it was a really fun league. So I played with them. John was in that. Uh, John was seven feet tall. and uh, But we had a blast. That's funny. Yeah, it was I the Bears. The, you guys were the... We, I was the Black Bears. We were the yeah. same jerseys that the kids just wore last night. Same jerseys. So you, <laughs> we didn't even know that. I yeah. mean, but, there you go. This would have been in the... Uh, I think you were on Team YNF. WYNF had a team. What was the team? No, I would have remembered that one. Um, sorry, Hairball, if you can remember, help me out. Uh, and did you know he's got the, the license plate, uh, Rink Rat? Regret? Or rink Rat. Oh, rink Rat. Yeah, he was a Rink Rat. He was, he was yeah, he, he never he was. Yeah, he, so he has the actual tag for the state of Florida for Rink Rat, which I thought the, was awesome. Just, just the guy. He is a good guy. So super stuff. So so that was the league, and then you you didn't even know it. that was my league. I and I ran it on. Yeah. <laughs> and so you know, me and David talked about you know what it's like to run leagues. Okay, and there I am doing it as a hobby, which right. is what they have a paid position for at Rinks to run men's leagues. It's not difficult. You just have to be able to have somebody that will will take te- point on it and will actually do it. Bring the players in, and you know that thing about that league is that the quality of the teams in that first season. Uh, wasn't necessarily superstars. Right. It, when the higher level teams would come to me and say, what are you doing? You guys are killing everybody. You don't belong in that league. I said, the league is where you guys belong. And the next season, the Tornadoes came and the Tritons came and we never won again. But <laughs> the, 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 the quality of the league was elevated because, not just because of the teams that went, but it was the format. Mm-hmm. Nothing had ever been done like that in men's league hockey. It was always a 14-game season, three seasons a year. Our season mirrored the NHL season. And that's what we want to do here for the teenagers. Okay. That's the whole point of this. And, and we've talked about before the, the uncertainties that are going on right now with USA Hockey, tournaments, can't travel out of state. Uh, things are up in the air. Yeah, and you know what? It's going to be that way for a while because we're spiking again. Yeah, so here in Florida, you know, we're doing pretty good, and, and the, the rinks are, are doing a good job, and uh, we've got rinks that we can play at, so we might as well start a local league where you don't have to travel, you can play your games locally, mm-hmm. and we can follow this format. So that's what we're going to talk about today. All right, so what about the uh, ages? What are we right. talking for? So for starters, we want to do this for teenagers. So we're looking at 02s to 06s. Gotcha. Okay, 13 to 18. So high school league. It's, it's like a high school league, but without the high school league. Yeah, it's a modified right. high school league. Right. 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 We're, we're certainly not going to take the place of the high school or the junior varsity league. No. This is not, this is, it, Totally set in place to not conflict. Right. It is. And and it's also totally set in place to give a lot of these players, and, you know, we talk about the forgotten men and women. I, I have this, I just talked to the rink today, and I was talking about the forgotten player. Mm-hmm. Who's the kid that just doesn't seem to want to be able to crack the lineup for, for varsity, not good enough to play travel, but wants that opportunity, and if it was given that opportunity, within six months, he'd be right up there with the rest of those guys. Oh, yeah. Right? Those are the players that are, are craving for something better, something different, something where they're going to get that opportunity. And it's kind of like why we put the spring team in for the Goosebump Blackbirds. We wanted to give some kids some ice time that hadn't gotten it before. Right. And look what happened. Yeah. You know, we played six very competitive games. Um, 
you know, and we finished up last night with a nice three-three tie against the, uh, the Seminole team, which was was outstanding. Our, the best game of the season oh, was a blast. A highlight. It was a blast. But these kids got so much ice time in those six games. Yeah. And you know, you rotate your lines evenly, and, and at this point, you know, if you're going to develop, you, you can't develop sitting on the bench, letting all the good guys play. Right. Right. So, yeah. Well said. No, well, I mean that that was kind of like the correlation we we're trying to do with the 14 you where you know the 14 team where you know it's a development team right. and, and giving. We need the repetitions. We need the ice time, sure. and, and let them play hockey. Now, the format of the games that we're going to play, and Dave and I have talked about this for a long time, is that we need to start playing real games. Right. These one-hour whirlwinds, where you know you come off the ice and, and the parent comes up to you and says, "Geez, you know, little Jimmy didn't get much ice time." He's going, "Well, we had a lot of penalties, and you know, we got to kill those penalties, and I can do this, and I did, and we got some power play, and it's over before you know it." Right. Oh, and, and, and by the way, you drove two and a half hours to get there for the 45 minutes right. of game time sure. to watch your kid play seven shifts. Well, or, or you drove to Fort Lauderdale to play the Junior Lightning, who you can play right here. You know, right. I mean, a lot of people are tired of that. And Dave makes a really good point about the older kids. They get driver's licenses now. They get jobs. They don't necessarily want travel. Some kids want to say, you know, I want to stay here and play my games here. I think that's why high school hockey is so popular. They sure. know where they're going to be Friday night. They know they're going to be playing the game they love, and they'll be hanging out with their buds. Right. I don't think it, it, there's a lot of kids out there that are not necessarily going to do a whole lot with hockey past high school. They just want to play. And so this league is going to be perfect for them. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. tell us some more. All right. Well, what about game schedule? All right. So we talked about the game. So, yep. so we're doing regulation games. Is that right? Yeah. We're going to do, uh, we'll start off with the, I'm going to go right down my list here. It's on the website, tampayouthhockey.com. You can go there and you can register for the league. We have a combine coming up, which is kind of a tryout thing, more of a player evaluation thing. But we're going to go right down the list here that's on the website. Uh, we start off with a 25-game season. Okay. So what are the benefits of a 25-game season? Well, for starters, you play one game a week, which means that you go to the rank, you play your game, and the rest of the weekend's yours. Right? Mm -hmm. you that's have, huge. You don't have to worry about sticking around at the rank for another five hours for your second game, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so a 25-game season also takes you all the way through the season. So we'll start in September. We'll end in April. Gotcha. Right, so you're going to be playing hockey for eight months, and mm -hmm. when you, you pay your fee, you don't have to worry about the next thing, the next thing you have to pay for the next It's all included. Everything that you've got set up is in one price, does it all type thing. Okay. 25-game season. Um, each team will get one week, one weekly practice. So, you know, these rinks and where we're going to buy this ice time is yet to be determined, uh, but the, the coaches will have some, some control over their teams uh, on where they want to buy, and then, and then the league will provide the money to buy that ice time. Okay. Okay. So if a coach has got a team that's primarily a lot of kids based up in Wesley Chapel, hey, we'd like to practice Wesley Chapel, sure, no problem. Wesley Chapel's not going to say no to that money. You know? Right. All right, so um, that's fine. We, we, this is going to be very flexible, very mm -hmm. flexible. Well, and scalable, too. I mean, we, we do not need 20 teams to start out a league. No. No, I, I will start this league with just four teams. Right. And, you know, we're talking about the schedule and location, location, location. We've got... Five to six arenas in the metro temp areas. Yes, it's a we're kind of like history always repeats itself. It does in a lot of you know uh, economies. We were, we had the Metro League in 1995, 96, mm -hmm. yep. and we were playing this interleague uh, kind of. Uh, and the Metro League still comes up in conversations. Yeah, I hear about the, the Metro League. So this yeah. is just an expansion of that. Now that we have Lakeland, we have Ellington, mm -hmm. and Wesley Chapel, Brandon, uh, Tampa Bay Skating, Cavalier, yeah. Fairway Ice Rink. Yep. I mean, that's a true Tampa Metro Division League. Absolutely. That's cool. Okay. So we're not going to have, like, a home rink. We're going to have uh, an independent league. If anything, Goose Pond here will be the headquarters for the league. Sure. And then the ice time will be bought where we can get it, and we'll set it up. And when it's set up, it'll be done up front. So you'll know at the beginning of the season where every game is played, and everything will be paid up front, and we don't have to worry about losing ice time. It's all going to be taken care of. Okay. And as a good friend once told me this morning, you know, this ring business is tough, Yeah. you know? So they're not going to say no to the cash. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's it. Well, it, with all the uncertainty, for sure. Exactly. And it's a great opportunity, like you guys are saying. So it's a good time to get in. Now, the games. Dave, talk to me about the value of three 20-minute stop time periods with 15-minute intermissions and resurface. Well, not only are you just coming for that one time, the coaches become engaged. So I'm looking at it from almost every side. So I'm looking from the coach's side, and uh, is he going to be engaged to coach for – that time, mm -hmm. that means he's going to have to prep a little bit more. He's going to have to identify his weaknesses with his players. So the coach automatically is going to say, hey, practices are, are, are set up for this, and then we're going to watch it happen in the game. And I can go back and forth between practice and games and correct. 
the game's not going to be over by the time I get a chance to figure things to out. Figure things right. out and stop the kid and do that small mod- modification or just kind of lead him in the right direction. So there's going to be some interaction. Yeah, so anytime you can get that coach to say, I'm engaged, I'm involved, versus just opening the door, and 50 minutes later, he's leaving. Right. He's just getting into the game, and he's got to quit. Yeah. So that's going to uh, give him an opportunity. We have that break in between. We can settle the guys down again. Everybody, it's, you know... It, um, a lot of leagues have that 15-minute break between the second and third or the first and the second. Absolutely, but not both. So how many times as a coach, you've come to the end of these one-hour games that they play here, and you say to yourself, man, we just started to play good. Right, if I had another five more minutes, another five more right. minutes, right? right. Yeah, because everything started quick, and you don't want the game to end. Yeah, so we, we, we know coaches are going to be, uh, I think, more involved for that whole season. The parents, we're going to see the value. A lot of times I'm hearing parents we just went to Kissimmee play. There was a mismatch. You know, it's September 1st. You know, oh, the season's going to be the worst year of our kid's life. Yeah, you're, yeah September you're, two, first. You're, two, you're two games into the season, yeah. Yeah. and you've already written it off saying, Correct. okay, come on, we'll just get through this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And listen, if you had an extra 15 more minutes of game playing time, it does even out quite often. There's not, if you look at the discrepancy between the first line player and the third line player, it's really like ten to fifteen percent. It's not eighty percent difference. Right. right. Well said. And, and the, that, that kid that's trying to crack that second line is going to be able to spend a little bit more time during that one hour getting some good feedback. From sure. Sure. And then you and I did a lot of ninety-minute scrimmages. Yeah. In the spring, how beneficial are those? The guys get that extra ice time. So from the player standpoint, they cardio. just gave us a coach's standpoint. From the player standpoint, stamina, endurance, cardio. Right? All those things, because now you're at the rink for two hours, two hours, 15 minutes. You're playing a lot of hockey, and then you're done for the day. And not only that, but you know, from a player standpoint, you know, and we're going to start all these games with the National Anthem. I don't know why we no, don't do that. That's pretty cool. It's nuts. Yeah. And okay. And so, so it's, if it's streaming or if it's something on somebody's iPod or whatever, that's, that's, am I dating myself with an iPod? No, I think there's still one. Yeah, there you go. All right, so if, if, whatever streaming device you have, or... Or maybe somebody's got a sister or a brother that, that's a good singer. Yeah. And now we start to highlight family members, and they're doing live performances. May I tell you a quick, quick story? We, uh, we were at a game, a tournament somewhere, uh, back when I was coaching with Justin Cirillo uh, with the Jacksonville Jets, Wise team. And uh, they tried to play the National Anthem before the game, and they couldn't get the, the thing working. Right? So Justin Cirillo goes, oh, for the love of Pete, let's just start singing. And he starts singing. Right. And now everybody in the stands was singing it. All the players were singing it, and and it made that game special. And and somebody posted on Facebook. I just got goosebumps. Right? Yeah, and then it just yeah. somebody posted on Facebook. This is one of the craziest things I've ever seen today. One of the coaches just started singing the national anthem because they couldn't get the thing to work. Next thing you know, everybody's singing it. We want this to be special. So from a player standpoint, standing on the blue line, listening to the national anthem, knowing that you're playing a real hockey game. Not saying the other games that are not real, but it's not the way it's done where you and I come from, or you come yeah. from. And these kids need to, in order to get ready for hockey past high school or hockey past youth hockey or teenage hockey, they should already be playing those types of games. Well, you know, what's funny is is the adults, you know, you look at the rink of dreams and things like that, right? Where you've got parents that are shelling out whatever it takes to stand on the blue line to sing the national anthem on the ice. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, so now we got that wrapped up into the package, right? Yep. And okay. All right, so on to the next part. That's the games and then the format of how we're going to do the games. Now, the FAHL is an independent hockey league, and we're going to be flying under the umbrella of AAU. Which is? The Amateur Athletic Union. Okay, they run sports for all sports in the United States, okay? And their hockey insurance is really good. Uh, they're very supportive of the programs that they have. Um, and, you know, nothing against USA Hockey, but it's separate. Right. And so we can do this and we can buy ice and we can do our independent league without being told by governing officials of USA Hockey, you can't do this and you can't do that. We're right. independent and we can do this. And every kid that, that is going to be in this league, as part of their player fee, that we included, will be registered AAU hockey. And that AAU registration will allow them to play anywhere. Yeah. Okay. We've, we've had registration issues where we've had kids that, you know, just their, their families have literally just moved to the States. They can't play. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there's it's a visa issue and things like that, and, and the kids are the ones that lose. I mean, this is what drives me crazy is that you, I understand the governing body, don't get me wrong, but who's, who are you trying to benefit? It, because the kids lost in this where 
They didn't do anything wrong. And you know, yet they can't play. You know, and I'm, I'm not we're not here to bash anybody or any organization and stuff, but I do believe the AAU is more player friendly. And I, and, and we're doing we're doing this for the players, we're not doing this for us. Well that's it. We're doing this for the players. We're giving, like I said, the forgotten player that needs wants that ice time, wants that opportunity. This is what it's for. So AAU is a really good vehicle to do that with. Um, and we have their support, their headquarters right here in Orlando. Um, and we've had uh, talks with them, and they're ready to go. We're, they're okay. happy about it. So uh, that's all good. Now, uh, the teams. Each team will have mandatory 17 players. That would be three lines of forwards, three lines of defense, and two goaltenders. Okay. Okay. It's 25-game season. It's a long season. Um, the, the, pl- the teams will be constructed via draft, two, two different ways actually. A com- complete draft for a whole team, or if Coach Dave or myself is going to come in with kids, we can come in with five protected skaters and two protected goalies if we've got goalies. Uh, and then the rest of the team will be drafted. Now because we're doing O2s through O6s, okay, after the combine we, we see how many players we got, and they're all categorized by birth year and skill level, we start drafting at the top. O2s sure. first. Let's say Dave brings in two O uh, two O twos on his protected list. He's going to skip the first exactly. two, the first two rounds because yep. he's already got two O twos. Okay, and we go down the birth years, and what you're going to end up having is you're going to have a league where every team has got a complement of every birth year. Yeah. Right. And you may have some highly skilled kids. You may have some kids trying to crack the lineup. But the bottom line is they're there to get e- equal playing time, and they're there to uh, um, to further their abilities or stand all that stuff that we talked about. Well, but they're getting an opportunity to play with older kids. Okay, a lot of kids would love to play with older kids and don't get that opportunity because that's okay. enough. Right. That's it. I think the role model aspect of it yes. has, has, has some uh, curb appeal to it. You know, and Ken's been running the draft out of TPSA for the 16U because we've got 12 to 16s out there. Mm-hmm. And we don't do a Bantam League. Um, and that's the draft has worked out great. Matter of fact, we're, we're going to bring that to the Peewees as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so that the teams are balanced. You, you don't right. see a 14 nothing blowout because right. all the teams are weighted accordingly. And it works works really well. Now, the nice thing is, let's say we're, we're all done drafting the teams, and there's a couple of guys that say, I really wanted to play for Coach Bowden. You know? Well, Coach Bowden's going to go to wherever those teams ended up, and it's going to say, hey, you know, I'd like to make a trade. Right. So we're going to allow training players okay, to make sure that kids are, are playing where they're comfortable. And uh, we're also going to allow trades to continue through the season, just like the NHL. Or if somebody goes down with an injury, and hey, I got this guy that wants to play, he can come in as a free agent. Um, he'll his parents, wherever, will take care of the rest of the season's fee, sure. and it will go to the player that was injured, so that player didn't lose anything. Uh, and uh, there'll also be a deadline for that. So just like the NHL, you reach a certain point in the season, roster is locked. locked. Now it's playoff time, right? right. Okay. So. And that takes you, you just brought up the playoffs. That brings me to the uh, the next point. Um, <laughs> I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> uh, we are going to charge tickets for this for this week. And people say, tickets, how can you charge tickets? Well, if you're going to go watch three time period, you're going to be at the rink for a couple of hours. I think that's worth five bucks. And when you find out where the money's going, you're going to be even happier because when it playoff season comes, all that money from the ticket sales is going to go to the playoffs which means you will not be playing, paying for the playoffs. Right. The ice time will be paid for, and the, the formats are going to be series. So if we have enough teams to do a first round, then it's going to be best of three, and if we, when we get to a championship, it'll be a best of five. Okay. Um, I have trophies I can repurpose for that for that very thing, uh, and, and I can make new trophies for the kids. Maybe they're going to be classic trophies, uh, something that kids will be proud to have won, mm-hmm. something where their name will go on it, and cool. it'll, be, it'll be you know shown around and brought about. Um, but that's going to be something that that's where that ticket money goes. So you're getting a 25 game season for the, for the cost of this league. But when it comes down to it, your team makes the playoffs. All the playoffs are going to be paid for by the ticket sales. Gotcha. And in right. five bucks a game, and if you are going to uh, be at every game, you can buy a season pass for a hundred dollars. You can come to every game. Gotcha. And I'm sure there'll be a family rate worked out. That's it. Hundred bucks season okay. pass. No, there you go. <laughs> Well, listen, ice is expensive. we got to be able to buy ice, right? Yeah. But, uh, no, I get it. So, um, also included in this thing is going to be an all-star week. Uh, I did this with the adult league in Ellington. I, like I said, we did an actual all-star week where we had a skills night, and then we had an all-star game at the Ice Palace, as it was called then, in the arena. Mm-hmm. And we had uh, uniforms made for those, and the players kept the uniforms. Oh, that's, that's pretty cool. cool. That's pretty cool. And so that's something that's also going to be included. And uh, every... 
player will have an ID card, FIHL ID card. So when they come in to check in for their game, they show their ID card. That way nobody can sneak in players, stuff like that. You know, right. It may happen, you know, but I think there'll be enough respect for this league that that's not going to be an issue. Um, we will keep track of stats. That's something that has always bothered me with the leagues around here. No one keeps track of stats. So as a coach, how are you going to scout the other team if you don't know score all the goals? Right? right. So we will have full stats online. Um, I don't know who's going to provide that yet. I still personally have a, a high favorability to Point Street. I think Point Street does a great job. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I'm willing to do that. And the uniforms will be provided for the teams by the league fee. So there's not going to be any extra costs in this. We've, we've got it set up so that when you pay your team fee, everything's included to the point where I think we're going to even be able to provide the coaches with parts, bottle bottles, sock tape, and white tape. Oh, there you go. <clears throat> if I can give a case of that to each each coach, that's your season supply. If you run out, it's on you. But we'll see. Yeah, the joys of being a volunteer. I never thought a volunteer would be a uh, you know <laughs> punitive. <laughs> How much money have you given to the youth hockey world? <laughs> right, uh, right. Any coach that yeah. that loves the kids that they're training has come up short a thousand times. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and never. You know what? You know what? And I applaud is they never say anything, which is what you just do what you need to do. Because it's about the kids. It's about the kids. Yeah. 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 And so that in a nutshell is everything that's on the website. And I think the time is right for this. I really, yeah. really do. Uh, I love the AAU aspect of it. I, I love it. It's a game changer because honestly, believe, between you guys and me here, I, I believe that once people see it in action, everybody's going to want to play. Well, you know, I can remember back in the day, you know, down at Ellington. That was the talk of the town, man. That was, that was, mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. And then, and then to be a part of that, and then, oh, geez, the black bears with Bert the Burner, one, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. The same jerseys we wore last night is what we wore in the that's night so 20 years ago. Yeah, that's stirring, that's stirring memories, man. Yep. Yeah, that's great. All right, well, um, go to tampayouthhockey.com, okay? Uh, there's a registration link. Fill it out. And then the step two is to go back and pay for the combine, which will be on the 11th and 12th. You have like one hour of ice on Saturday, one hour of ice on Sunday. We'll be there evaluating you uh, in a scrimmage format. We'll be ranking you by birth year and by skill level. Um, and that is how we're going to determine how we draft. Now, will there be a supplemental trial or something like that? Because okay. you've got a bunch of... There's I mean, a lot going on, 4th of July, so forth and so on. And there is a possibility, if we don't have the numbers that we want by that time, that we may extend the combine a couple more weeks to, okay. get, to get more players. But I really think and hope that we'll have enough to get this thing started. Right. Uh, I want to really stick to these rosters. Uh, it's what make, the members are what make it work. Um, and if we can stick to these numbers and get four teams, we're okay. going to need roughly roughly sixty skaters. That's a which you know that's doable. I think that's doable. Yeah. yeah. I and, see those at the skate shoots. Sure. And and then as the interest grows, you yeah. know. I'm not opposed to inserting a team midway through the season, but I'd rather wait till the next season. Right. Um, it's just I really want people to see it. Well, actually. you know, one of the things that, like what we were doing with the with the development team, um, it's the fear factor. You know, and and okay, I don't know anything about this, and, and you know, but it doesn't have the accreditation. But these are the same people that had concerns about the programs they were in to begin with. So I, I don't, you know, take it for face value for what the offer. Um, knowing that this is what it is and what it can be and what it should be. Yeah. There, there's no, you know, it, it seems pretty well thought out. I mean, no, it's, it, it not only just well thought out, but it's been done. I did this with the adult league. The only right. difference between the adult league and what we're doing here is the draft. I didn't do a draft of the adult league. Right. Okay. And it ran very smoothly and everybody loved it. We had a blast, yeah. And it's, it's something that can be done. I mean, you got good coaches, Dave, myself, yourself. Um, and we'll, we'll recruit some other coaches if we need them to be. Um, you know, there's going to be high standards. And, yeah. you know, there's not going to be uh, girls and boys dressing in the same locker room. There's not going to be, you know, be a policy of, of proper behavior and codes of conduct. I mean, we want people to, to say, hey, you're here to learn, you're here to grow, and uh, we don't want to deal with all this sidebar stuff. Right. We want to play hockey. We right. want to get better at it. Okay. That's what we're here for. All right. Well, there you go. All right. Well, that's a wrap. You think? Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. All right, so don't forget, get on that type of youthhockey.com and register, and we'll see you out there uh, July 11th and 12th. All right. Hey, have a great weekend. Beautiful.